Hey YouTube, my name's Steph and my partner is a collector, which makes me a collector by proxy. So today I wanted to share some of our movies with you. We have uh, many collections on our shelf, but uh, I wanted to share one of my favorites, which is our Studio Ghibli collection. I really, really love this collection that we have. We don't have every single movie, I don't think, but we do have the majority of them. Uh, one just recently came out, I think, that we don't have or is coming out. But other than that, we have all of them. Um, so I want to share these with you. I think they are uh, just fantastic. Obviously, Studio Ghibli is one of the best, if not the best, animation studios ever. Um, and the movies that they put out are just amazing. If you are someone who is kind of a vanilla uh, film watcher or wants to get into more animation and doesn't know where to start, I highly recommend Studio Ghibli Films. They are just a great entryway into getting used to seeing anime. One, the animation is always impeccable and two, the stories are so compelling and so sweet and a lot of the time simple and um, can be very adult. So if you're the kind of person or you're trying to get somebody who doesn't think that animation is for adults, this is a great, great um, studio to start showing them movies from. Anyway, we have, I think, 23 films to go over. So let's get started. Number one is, um, a, these are in no specific order, by the way, this is just how I grab them off the shelf. Um, but number one is when Marnie was there. This is such a lovely film, um, a very coming of age, uh, friendship, mystery, there's so, it's so many genres, uh, like most studio, uh, Ghibli, Ghibli. I'm going to interchange probably. I'm sorry. Um, but Ghibli or Ghibli, people say different things. Anyway, when Marnie was there. So this is about a girl named Anna who goes to, uh, kind of a seaside, place with her relatives or goes to stay with relatives by the seaside and while she is there and kind of enjoying her summer or trying to enjoy her summer she discovers this old marsh house and she meets a girl named Marnie who lives there. Uh, there's so much mystery around Marnie and this house and um, this it's about Anna kind of discovering her her new friend and the mysteries about the house and who Marnie is. So just a lovely, lovely film when Marnie was there. Number two is one that I really, really enjoy. The Tale of Princess uh, Kaguya, Kawaga, Kaguya. I'm terrible, I'm so sorry. Uh, the Tale of Princess Kaguya. It's directed by um, I Izo Takahata. Again, I'm so terrible with names. I'm so sorry. I'm trying. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this is a, a very different kind of style of animation though, than what uh, Studio Ghibli usually does. Um, it's a lot more simple, um, but not. It's still so gorgeous. Um, this uh, movie is based off of a Japanese, uh, an old Japanese tale called The Bamboo Cutter, which is about a bamboo cutter who finds a, um, a princess uh, in a lotus flower in the forest. And um, they, she turns into a baby and they raise her and take care of her um, to be eventually a princess. And the story is about how um, this princess um, deals with her supernatural uh, abilities and, well, abilities past, uh, as it were. But anyway, this is just a very lovely story about family, 
uh, about growing up. A lot of Studio Ghibli is a, uh, films are about growing up. Um, and this is just so gorgeous and it's so touching and it's so beautiful. So that is number two, The Tale of Princess Kaguya. And number three is um, The Wind Rises by uh, the one and only Miyazaki. Uh, super, super beautiful thing. Uh, a big thing in Miyazaki's films is the uh, kind of theme of airplanes and flying, and this one is no different. Uh, this is about a uh, boy, eventually a man, who dreams of becoming a pilot, uh, who has to deal with the fact that because he can't see, he, well, can't see, he's nearsighted, so he can't fly and eventually becomes uh, one of the greatest airplane designers. It's a love story. It's another coming of age story. It's about war. It's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful film. And um, it's one of the, the painting scene here and the scenery in this film is often copied a lot if you see artists uh, doing like um, Studio Ghibli, like sketching and painting. This is one uh, where you will see a lot of the art from. So that is The Wind Rises, number three. So number four is From Up on Poppy Hill. Now this one was written by Hao Miyazaki and actually directed by his son, Gorgo Miyazaki. Again, I'm so sorry if I'm messing up the names. Uh, I'm really trying. <laughs> um, anyway, so this one is, I'm just looking at the, the art on the back here. It's so pretty. Um, this is a story uh, of two high school students and kind of their uh, summer discovery and love. Um, this takes place in um, 1963, which is kind of just after World War II, where Japan is starting to host the Olympics. So it's a time of change. It's a time of growth um, in, in Japan. Um, but uh, this is just another lovely coming of age love story uh, between two high school students. And it is super, super sweet and lovely. I definitely recommend this one. So that is from Up on Poppy Hill, number four. So number five is The Secret World of Ariadne. Um, I know I'm not saying that right. <laughs> but anyways, so this is a uh, beautiful, beautiful story. Again, I'm always going to say they're beautiful because it's just, the animation is gorgeous in these. Um, this, I think, might be my least favorite, but it is still um, just very, very good. This is about Ariadne, who is a very tiny girl. Uh, who lives underneath the house floorboards with her very tiny family. Um, and basically there's a world of tiny people that live um, doing tiny little things inside <laughs> tiny spaces in people's homes. Um, and she is discovered by a human boy named Sean. Um, and people aren't supposed to know about them being small and all of that. So their friendship kind of um, defies the odds and uh, creates some stir and adventure. And it's just a lovely little story about friendship uh, and another coming of age, of course. <laughs> so that one is our number five. Um, number six, Ponyo. I actually haven't seen this one yet. This is not on my list. Um, I do know a little bit, I've seen a little bit of it because there is a bar in town that has this on all the time. So um, they have it up on their TV. So I've seen clips and pieces, but I've never actually watched it in full. Um, but again, it is just um, a beautiful little fish person. <laughs> I don't know what this is about, I'm sorry. But number six, that's on our list, Ponyo. Uh, if you liked it, let me know below. Um, this one, 
I actually do know a little bit about. Um, Tales from Earth Sea. Uh, this is a super amazing epic. Um, this is based on a book from Ursula K. Gunn. Gin? Gunn. I'm going to say Gunn because that's how to say it. Ursula K. Gunn, um, who is a fantastic sci-fi female writer. So definitely check out that book. Um, but this is a super, like, sorry, I'm like looking at the sunset on the back. <laughs> this is just, um, this is a really, really good uh, film. It's a high fantasy uh, adventure. Uh, definitely recommend if you're somebody who's into uh, dragons and fantasy and uh, adventure. It's a very good film. Um, and if you've read the book, check out check out the animated movie. Um, so that is, what is that, number six? It's number seven. Number seven. Uh, this one you've probably heard before. Number eight is Howl's Moving Castle. Um, definitely a, um, a Studio Ghibli classic. Um, this is magic, adventure, war, um, a lot of allegory regarding um, climate change and industry uh, and all of that. I uh, definitely recommend um, for everyone. It is such a beautiful, fantastical film. Yeah, so Howl's Moving Castle. Um, if you haven't heard of it, definitely check it out. It is fantastic. Um, that is our number nine. That was number eight. Um, this is a uh, another um, uh, Takahata film. This is My Neighbors, the Yamadas. Um, again, you'll notice that the drawing style is a little different from your traditional Studio Ghibli. Um, this is a fantastic family film. It's just the, this family um, just, you know, growing up together and uh, doing their thing. It is fantastic. It, there's such good music in this. Um, I definitely uh, recommend it. Uh, there's a lot of very catchy um, music and tunes and um, just a really sweet uh, family story. So I would recommend this one. That is our number nine. Uh, our number 10 is The Cat Returns. I would love a first The Cat, but he only ever returns. He never starts. Uh, this is a uh, super fun film. Um, again, a hint of magic. The Aristocratic Cat. Um, and yeah, this is a very, um, very Ghibli movie. Uh, if you like cats, Cat Returns, um, girl bored with her everyday ordinary life wishes for something different and, uh, she gets it and then she has to find her way out and back to her ordinary life, which she learns is not so bad after all. Um, yeah, I highly recommend The Cat Returns. It's just so fun and the, like, come on, look, look at this fancy cat. So number 11 is the one and only Princess Mononoke. Um, if you are an environmentalist or can, are, are interested in the environment, um, definitely check out any Ghibli Miyazaki directed film, but, uh, this one is like one of the definite ones that you need to check out. Um, also if you're just into like epic, um, like warrior princesses, Princess Mononoke is the 
uh, movie to watch. I'm gonna see if we pull the slip cover off. No, it's the same. But uh, I highly recommend that um, Princess is um, protecting her her home and her forest from industry and um, encroaching encroaching industry um, and um, it's so good. There's a lot more to it. <laughs> we got to keep moving because it's already at we're already at twenty minutes anyway. So this is a very, very good um, epic tale and adventure, and it has a lot of those classic um, Ghibli characters that you'll see um, kind of popularized in, in everything, like on shirts and stuff like that. So if you haven't seen Princess Mononoke, definitely check it out. Um, the next one is oh i have not seen this one yet this is um number 12 whisper of the heart and i believe holy cow the cat i believe this is the original cat from the cat returns Whisper of the Heart. I just realized that. Wow, I kind of made a little idiot of myself there. Um, that's okay. So I'm going to definitely watch this one um, because I need to learn more about the cat. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the cat. Anyway, Whisper of the Heart is our number 13. 13? This is number 12. Eventually, I'll learn how to count. Whisper of the Heart. Uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, and I'll let you know what I think. Uh, number. This is number 13. Pompoco. This is such a cute um, film. Another one by Takahata. I know Miyazaki is the, like, the the legend, but Takahata is, might be my favorite, honestly. Everything that this, he puts out, um, is, they're both very good. Who am I kidding? I'm not going to try and compare them. Uh, anyway, Pompoko, uh, raccoons, shape-shifting raccoons. I'm not going to say anything else. This is fantastic. Check it out. Uh, number 14, Another Ghibli classic, My Neighbor, My Neighbor Totoro, or Totoro, as I say. Um, but uh, this is another classic Ghibli uh, young girl, girls um, in a new home, um, dealing with their mother being sick and their father now being the primary caretaker, and they make friends with a forest spirit Totoro and it is just such a lovely uh wholesome movie uh with a little magic and adventure in it so definitely recommend that one that is our number 14. Our number 15 is uh another one I have not seen this is Ocean Waves by Studio Ghibli. I don't recognize the director, um, but hmm. anyway, Ocean Waves. Um, this is another one I have to check out in our collection. So that is number 15. Um, I think the art on this looks beautiful. It's a Studio Ghibli. Of course it will. I'm excited for that. Another one is Only Yesterday, again, by Takahata. Um, this is about a girl, uh, an older woman, I guess. She's 27 years old, and she uh, decides to leave the city and go visit um, her family in the country um, after many, many years. Um, and it's kind of about her 
rediscovering her past and her family um, and maybe falling in love. So <laughs> this is a really sweet one. I really enjoy this one. So that is Only Yesterday by uh, Studio Ghibli, directed by Takahata. Uh, this one borders on my favorite. Um, number 17, Kiki's Delivery Service. I think this is the most non-consequential Studio Ghibli movie. Like, all of them, all of these movies are very sweet and wholesome, but there's always, like, conflict, right, to drive the story. This one is just, like, a young witch moves out, she goes and she discovers herself. Like, the, the stakes are, like, here, but, like, it doesn't, like, that doesn't take away from the movie at all. Like, you're in it the whole time, and this, it's just such a sweet, a definite coming-of-age story. Um, so sweet, so beautiful. Um, friendship, rom romance, a little bit of romance, to I me, mean, she's young. Um, but, <laughs> and uh, just a girl um, learning to be okay with who she is, and I really, really love this movie Kiki's Delivery Service definitely one of my favorites uh and this one this one's a lot of fun so this is our number 17 and this is Porco Rosso Rosso Por Porco Rosso <laughs> uh planes and pigs and animals it's so cool so this is uh this is a a pig pilot. <laughs> this is so much fun. So World War One fighter pilot flying around and he's also a pig and he's super cool um, and everything's in planes and he, he's just like his plane on the back. Uh, anyway, so yeah, he's like a pig with an attitude who's he thinks he's hot stuff. Um, but he gets some plane pirates, that's not what they're called, <laughs> plane pirates uh, upset and he kind of thwarts, thwarts their uh, plans and flighty mischief. And it's, uh, it's about him kind of just being badass. Uh, I haven't watched this for a really long time, sorry, but this is a really fun one. Uh, definitely check it out, and it's it's really neat. Um, I don't know what it is, the pig aspect, just I get a kick out of it. So, uh, Porco Rosso. So, this is our number 18, and could be the most depressing movie of all time. I'm going to go ahead and say it probably is. This is another Takahata, and I absolutely love it. Um, oh, man. Have you guessed what it is? Graveyard of the Fireflies. So this is about war orphans. Um bombs fall in Japan, their family dies, and it's about a young boy, um, you know, trying to make sure that him and his sister survive alone, um, and, you know, dealing with having to live on the street and become thieves and, you know, fight for survival. And it's just knowing that this happens and actually ha had happened in Japan um, like it was a huge thing after the war and it happens still to this day all over the world um, not to get too too serious but like this it's just a heartbreaking film but it is so so good and if you if you ever need like a good cathartic cry pop this in man um, or if you just want to watch, like, just a, a beautiful, beautiful film. 
graveyard of the fireflies um uh, yeah definitely one of my favorites in our collection for sure number 20. we're almost there guys if you've hung out this long with me way to go um so this one is definitely very fun it's got um planes train it actually does have planes and trains planes trains and automobiles anyway castle in the sky this is just beautiful very miyazaki um film very miyazaki uh you know environmental there's planes there's uh beautiful fantasy castle in the sky there's a princess um that needs rescuing but also needs to rescue everyone else um castle in the sky is our number 20. so we have this one is a little controversial because technically some would argue that this isn't a studio ghibli film um, because it was actually made before the studio, um, was formed. But this is the OG Miyazaki, and that is Nausicaa. Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. Again, if you are an environmentalist at all, an activist, of it, like, this is the movie for you, hands down. Um, Nausicaa Valley of the Wind post-apocalyptic sci-fi strong princess adventure it's it's everything that you could want um we have the manga we have the manga and that is also fantastic but definitely check out this film that is our number 21 number 22 and this is actually our final Studio Ghibli film. You've made it to the end. Congratulations. I hope it was worth it. Um, number two is actually um, a joint production. This is The Red Turtle. Um, very, very beautiful film. I'm pretty sure. Does it say on here? Yeah, Academy Award nominated. We watched, I remember watching this with Andrew um, when we were watching all of the Academy Award movies. Um, so this one is very good. Um, woman found washed up on the sea, lives her life, um, becomes turtle. <laughs> no, it, there's, it's so much more than that. <laughs> that was really reductive. Uh, definitely beautiful. Um, and I'm pretty sure this has, uh, this is just silent. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, there are no words um, spoken. It is all animation and it is gorgeous and it is compelling and it is such a beautiful story. So that is the last movie in our studio Ghibli Club. Hey everybody, real quick. Uh, I'm jumping in here because I almost missed a movie. I cannot believe I almost missed this movie. It was not in our shelf. It was off the shelf because Andrew is putting together uh, a list for me to share with you for one of my next videos. Um, but I knew, I knew I was missing something and I looked and I can't believe it. Um, this is our, mine and Andrew's favorite Ghibli film. And that is Spirited Away. This is, hands down, we, like, we've decided together that it's our, like, couple favorite, I guess. It's probably his favorite, but, um, again, I've said that a bazillion of them are my favorite. This one's definitely really good. We actually have a, the poster of this <laughs> right behind this camera. Um, this is, again, another, like, pop, pop culture classic. Um, you'll see tons of things from this movie in all of pop culture. You've got No Face, you've got The Sprites, you've got Baba Yaga, you've got everything. Um, and this is a super magical, uh, film 
that is just breathtaking in every sense. Um, goes, uh, enters a mysterious world. Um, there are spirits everywhere. Her family gets like turned into, I think, turned into pigs. And she has to make a deal with the Baba Yaga um, to basically work for her family back. And it takes her on this huge magical adventure. And it is so exciting and it is so amazing. I definitely highly recommend this. So this was 24, 24, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and I have one, one special mention left, um, and that is not a Ghibli, but a Miyazaki-made movie, and that is A Loop in the Third, um, a film directed by Hao Miyazaki. Um, so Castle of Caligstro, Loop in the Third. I don't know a lot about Loop in the Third, but I know this movie was amazing a super fun adventure um I believe lupin this was italian but i don't know i don't know anything but this is a super great film so if you have an opportunity to see it definitely check it out a great miyazaki um film not a studio ghibli film so that was it guys thank you so much for sticking with me for this hopefully not super long uh, time for you. Uh, I had a lot of fun sharing our Ghibli collection. Uh, have you seen these films? Do you like these films? Which one is your favorite? Let me know. Um, and uh, if there's anything else that you recommend I check out for what I like, definitely let me know too. I'd love to have some recommendations. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you feel a little inspired to check out some Studio Ghibli films. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. Bye!